Welcome back to Live with the Mod, the Poet, powered by Revolution and One, where we have the greatest guests and most powerful conversations. And today is no different. And today we have a very special guest. We have journalist, media personality, and host, Miss Symphony Thompson. How you doing today, family? I am good. Thank you so much for having me, Amon. I appreciate you. And I'm just so grateful to be here. So thank you. And this is probably one of the most special episodes because this is probably the first guest that I had on who I actually know personally. Um, we worked together at Comedy Hype. Um, I think it was around this time last year. Um, and I know my show actually never aired, but um, we we got to uh, work closely and just um, you kind of helping me structure my show and like everybody pretty much in the building helping me work on my journalistic chops. So I really appreciate y'all for that. But um, it's just a full circle moment and it's a blessing to have you on. So I really appreciate you coming on. Um, I wanted to start off uh, by talking about um, just just your journey and how you got into journalism in general. I know you've interviewed a lot of famous people, a lot of, you know, people that a lot of people might know of and probably that people might not know of, but you just have great conversations with people. Um, what's got you started in this whole um, journey of journalism? Because I know you said um, that you originally set out to be a physical therapist, if I'm not mistaken. No, so you're absolutely how, right. So how did you pivot? What, what, what made you pivot? Yeah, great question. Um, so yeah, so I went to went to college to be an exercise sports science because I ran track, right? So that's just parallel to to that experience, you know, being and and, and I think this story has been told a million times, right? I was mm-hmm. injured and um just my experience and then I wanting to have a hand in different athletes that may experience that. So I was like, oh, physical therapy, you know, it it makes so much sense. And then by my junior year, that junior year, I was in my internship and I was like, Lord. This this ain't it. This this ain't that. This or or it. Mm-hmm. And um, I I wanted to change my major then, but my mom was like, no, you know, you have to. We got to see this through. You know, track is paying for college. I'm not paying for college again, so we're gonna see this through. So I went on finished college, and after I graduated, I just found myself at a place where like I was just depressed, right? Because I was a student athlete. I was used to moving and getting things done. And then there just came a halt because I knew I didn't want to go into physical therapy. Getting your bachelor's degree is only a stepping stone to even become a therapist. So Mm. I knew I didn't want to further my education within that field. So um, for about three months, I didn't have a job. I wasn't running track. School was Mm. done. You know, I'm right out of college and um, started working at Enterprise. Did very well there. Anybody that knows anything about Enterprise Car Rental, it's, it's, it's no game. It's no game. Um, but even there, it just wasn't fulfilled. I was able to be very successful, but wasn't fulfilled until um, I saw one of my friends that live out in Atlanta. He was working at a corporate job. And I was like, wow, like, you know, let me go. Still not having anything about media in mind. Because, you know, mind you also, like, growing up, I've always been into, like, fashion shows and putting on, um, like, shows for my family, but never thought in my mind, like, oh, wait. I could take this and do this full time as a career. So at this time, I'm still thinking corporate, right? Graduate college, get a good corporate job, you know, all all the things. Um, But God had a different plan as he was molding me and shaping me in every period of my life. Looking back now, like working Mm. at Enterprise, having those three months off, running, like all these things taught me and, and prepared me for where I am now. Um, So, yeah, so I ended up moving to Atlanta and I did a fashion show back home. And a photographer saw me. He was like, his name is Chris Kelly. Chris Kelly was like, there's something in you. Like, I don't know what it is, but just the way that you're walking, there's something. So we did a, we did a photo shoot. After that photo shoot, he was like, hey, come to me with a fashion show. Ahmad, when I say like, God will show up in any room. Mm. God does not like, he, he will, he will not say like, oh, I'm not going to, you know, I ain't going to go in there. Cause she, you know, she, he will show mm. up in any room. I was at a fashion show. And again, no thoughts of like, oh, this is going to be a full-time thing. I'm just like, this is fun. This is something I enjoy. I love people. I love entertaining, whatever. Kid you not, I met a guy who was like, hey, I really love your personality. Have you ever done red carpet interviews? And I'm like, well, Mm. no, not not really, but kind of. Like, you know, because whenever I put on productions for my family, I would do that, right? Like I would sit them and ask them, you know, how, how did you enjoy yourself? And like all the things. And um, so went to red carpet events with him. His name is Jerome with In-House Media. 
And from one door to another, every event I went to, it would be somebody coming up to me like, hey, have you ever done this before? And I would stretch the truth a little bit. I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I yeah, would stretch like the truth that. just a little bit and say like, yeah, I have. Because technically, I haven't done it on a professional level. But again, putting on shows for my family. I've done fashion shows. I've done all these things. So honestly, like anytime I say like how I got here, like it's, and I know, I know it sounds cliche in this time. Like it was truly God because I never mm-hmm. intended to do this full time. I never thought that I could do this full time. Always admired the art and love, you know, in entertainment, but never thought that I could do it. So it would just be me going into different rooms, taking opportunities that were presented to me and not being afraid to say yes. Being afraid that like, oh, this is something new for me. You know, I've never done this before. What if I, what if I this, what if I that? You know, of course, all these doubts, but never being too afraid to at least try it. And every time I tried it, it would be, oh, somebody else saw me. Because, right, they always tell us, somebody's always looking. Whether you think so or not, somebody's always looking. So I would just end up in rooms and, and strategically just, God was like, God is being strategic. Now, I mean, God is strategically like, okay, now, oh, you learned this lesson. Let me go ahead and. Let me swoop this in for you. And yeah, now here I am. What is this? Six years later, mm. full time entrepreneur, full time into the media world. And God is just continuing to open doors as I just take the moments that he gives me and really hone in on it and, and ask God, OK, how can I magnify what you've given me so that I continue to grow and do the things for your kingdom? Because this this is not for me. If it was up to me, I'd have a corporate job with a, you know, and, and that may work for someone. And I, and I don't want to sound like I'm putting anybody down, but that just wasn't the path that God had for me. And he was like, Oh, that's cute. <laughs> that's cute. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm going to show, I'm going to show you what I really have for you. So yeah, I know that's a long story. But <laughs> no, that's real. I, I really like the part where you said there's not a room that God won't go in. Like that's real. And a lot of people don't understand. It's like, Oh, blessing Kate. Well, that was when you was at the lowest point of your life. God was still there. Like, it, and that's just, that's just powerful. Um, I wanted to ask you, what what do you associate with more uh, as like a journalist or a media personality? Like, wh- which one do you associate more? And I ask you that because um, you're very surgical when it comes to like being a journalist. And I just didn't know if that's like something that you owned. And if it's something that you own, like, yeah, I'm like a journalist. Like, when did you buy in? You know, because mm-hmm. when I was playing sports and stuff, you know, when I was playing basketball, it's a point where you just plan like the game. And then it's a point where it's just like, you own the title. Like this is like, you embody it. Like, yeah, I take pride in this. And the way you do journalism, it's like a sense of pride that I see. And I'm I'm trying to figure out like, when did you like own it? Cause I mean, we can all do stuff. Like when I first started podcast, I didn't view myself as a journalist per se, but then I, I kind of got to a point where I studied other podcasts and I'm just like, I don't want to be like that. Like, I don't want to just look like I get on here and have fun. Like I want to look like I take this seriously. Like I want to look like, like I want to excel and look like, like next level and whatever I do. So, um, I, with, do you associate with the personality or the journalism? And if you do associate with being a journalist very heavy, when did you like fully buy in? Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to flip flop the answers to those questions. So I recently understood that like, oh, OK, you know what? Like, Symphony, you are a journalist. And mm-hmm. what's crazy is, again, God showing up in rooms because sometimes for me, like I'll ask God like, hey, I need you to speak directly to me, like plain mm. and clear, make it plain and clear to me. And it's crazy. Someone sent me a DM, um, a friend that I went to college with. And she was like, you know, um, I really love what you're doing. Um, you're very inspiring. But the words that she said to me that stuck was she was like, I don't consider you a media personality because, you know, some people you see them in, and they're putting on a personality for their media realm that they're in. And she was mm-hmm. like, but it's it's just you. You make people feel comfortable. And that's always been you outside of you being where you are now. So she was like, and that's all. And see what I mean? God is crazy in a great way. But she was yeah. just like, I see you as a personality. And it, it was at that moment I was like, wow, I've never caught or I never led with like, oh, hey, I'm a media personality. I just kind of like took what people gave, right? Like never really thought to like, oh, hey, let me set aside and say, okay, who am I in this game? Because I was working and just trying to like, okay, pursue what God has given me, but not taking the time to sit back and say, you know what, Symphony, hold on, wait a minute. You, just because you didn't go to school or just because you didn't, your path didn't look one way or another, 
you, you're still a journalist. So I definitely mm-hmm. identify more with the the journalism side. And again, there's nothing wrong with media personalities. Um, but then also, like you said, there is a sense of pride. I am very intentional. Um, and just like you, you know, the work that I do, I look at certain, you know, studying certain people um, in the industry and I'm like, I don't want to be like that. Or, oh, hey, I like this, you know, just taking mm-hmm. different pieces and understanding like I, I I want to make sure when I come in the room, like I'm gonna make you feel good, but you're gonna know that I'm serious about what I do. So definitely more journalistic side. And it it took all these years, I'm not, I'm not it took all these years to look back and say, you know what, I am this. So mm. it, recently, within the so last would, couple of months. So who would you say is somebody like not that you pattern yourself after per se, but somebody that you look mm-hmm. at and you're like, I kind of like the way they approach journalism or just approach like curating conversations? That's a great question. So there's a there's a couple people um that I would say I look to for certain things. I can't say there's like one person. Um, but I'll I'll just name a I'll name a couple. So I really love uh the person I'm gonna say the personality piece of what we see, right? Because mm. I've met Kiki, and I'm gonna name her Kiki Palmer. I met her before. Um, mm. and it was still bubbly, but obviously I don't know her enough. So I'm just gonna go based on the personality that's shown. What I love about Kiki Palmer, and again, she's actress, right? But she also has a podcast and and it is different things that she does that a lot of people may not pay attention to. But every conversation that she has, it's very, it's almost like you're a fly on the wall into your cousin's conversation, yeah. right? Where it's like, it's real, it's raw, it's, it's, it feels very honest. And it's like, oh, that's, that's my home, that's my home girl. Like that's, oh, okay, that's my girl. You know, when people talk about like, yeah, my girl, Kiki, you know, because in, in the, the space that I'm in, I think it is important to make people, especially when I'm like hosting events, it's important to make people feel comfortable. That, that is one of the main things. And it's a, it's a natural personality trait of myself too. So just naturally I cling to her because of her ability to make people just feel like family, to make mm-hmm. the room feel warm and fun. But we're going to get down to the nitty gritty as well because Kiki Palmer can go into multiple realms and it's like, oh, oh, she can do that. Oh, and she can do that. Um, and her ability is to just fall into all these different um, mediums within media. Like now she, you know, she's starting to get into production and things. And I really love that. Um, and some of these people I'm going to name are probably not even like host or anything. These are just women that I, I admire. Obviously, um, seeing Quinta Bronson, the way that she's been able to, to cultivate her career. Um, obviously, from a different level, I didn't realize she started as uh, like going viral with the, um, oh, he got money and different mm-hmm. things like that. But her ability to create a show, of course, Issa Rae, right? That's someone on a business tip that I follow her model. Um, because when I created my show, Black Friday Report, I looked after, okay, hey, I know she started when she was in college. How did she set this up? When she got to HBO, that was her first big deal. Who did she partner with or who did she seek to, to find that counsel so she so that she's not getting taken advantage of by the industry. Um, so Issa Rae is a, a big one for me right now because as I'm transitioning more to the back end of things, like I just want to do it right, right? Like I, I want to make sure if somebody made a mistake before me, let me study that mistake so that my mistakes can look different. Like I don't want to make the same mistakes that somebody else has made. Like it doesn't make sense. If you've done it and you've corrected, okay, let me study your path. I'm going to make mistakes, but it'll be my, my own mistake that someone else can learn from. Um, so Issa Rae is a huge one as well. And also her too, right? She's doing, you know, she's having conversations. She's also, as she's um, building her empire, bringing p- people up with her. So watching that model and seeing how she's able to continue her success and still be able to to help others as well. So those are some, I can, um, Sherry Shepard, I love her personality and her show. Um, the, I mean, the list goes on there. There are a plethora of women that I love and what they do. I noticed when you uh, do your interviews, you kind of got a good flow to it. You might throw in an extra question. You might, you know, um, I forgot what type of you might do unstructured questions when somebody's talking and then you kind of pick up on something like, let me go further into that. When did you when would you think you kind of got more comfortable into that? I mean, I know sometimes you might read from a prompter, which was new for me. Like, when did you kind of get comfortable with the whole process? Because that's different. Like, I didn't I didn't know how like strenuous that was until I tried to do it like reading from a prompter like that's a real talent even reading like a audio script like all of that is 
way difficult than it looks. Absolutely. Yeah. So my first time reading for um, a prompt was actually when I came on to Comedy Hive. Mm. Um, before Comedy Hive, when I would do on-screen stuff, I would write my script on site, memorize it, and then perform it. So when I came to Comedy Hive, he was like, oh, have you ever read a prompter? I was like, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, kind of, a little bit. Um, so definitely, I, trust me, I, I understand that. But as far as getting comfortable, honestly, to this day, like, because I still get nervous, whether I'm having mm. a conversation, going on stage or anything, I am still, and I mean nervous, like, I can't feel my fingertips or my toes. Wow. Like, I'm like, I, I feel like all my blood is just leaving my body. Um, so I still get nervous to this day. I, um, I mean, there's a confidence in knowing that, like, I'm, I'm just a natural people's person. Like, I love people and I truly enjoy having conversations. So there's a confidence in that. But when it comes to conversation, ooh, 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 beforehand, I'd be like, I'd be, them doubts be coming out here like, can I do this? Should, should, mm-hmm. I, should, I, should I do this? Can I, can I really? And then once, once the conversation starts, like I'm, I just breathe and honestly, like all the nerves kind of slowly start to go away. So to this day, I, I mean, I'm comfortable in the sense of like, I, I'm confident in being able to, to get it done and I'm going to do it regardless of how I feel. But baby, whoo, I, I still get nervous and it's still mm-hmm. like a, a level of like, I guess I don't, I want to, I mean, I'm, I'm going to call it doubt, but I think it's just, I care so much that I want to do it right. Mm-hmm. So it's just, you know, just making sure that I'm I'm in alignment to make sure that I get it done and I do it right. So yeah, what, yeah. What, what would you, it's still I think I'm still growing in that, yeah. What would you I I was gonna ask, what would you say is the most um important part of structure in the show or just media in general, you know, um, you working on the Black Friday report, you know, producing it, you know, coming up with the idea, you, you kind of brainchild the whole thing from beginning to where it's at now. Um, what would you say is the most important part with it? I know a lot of people, um, say that it's getting stuff greenlit or getting stuff like, you know, somebody to push it and stuff like that. But what would you say is the most essential part? Because I feel like that can be a bigger part but what would you say is like the more smaller step that that people can make to kind of make those processes a little bit easier? Yeah. So I guess it depends on um, what type of production are we talking about? If it's mm-hmm. like um, interviews or, you know, sit down with somebody, I think one understanding the intention and the end goal, um, because, you know, conversations, depending on what you're, what you're going to be talking about, um, who you're talking to, like, it can go left, it can go right. So just having your intention in mind and your end goal in mind as well. So anytime in those type of productions, I think it's a little bit more simple. But when it comes to like TV production, where with my show Black Friday Report, um, what I learned, like getting things greenlit is, I do think is important, but I think that's important later down the line. Um, Because even after we got Black Friday Report greenlit, there were a lot of things that I didn't have in place because I just didn't know until it's like, oh, I wish I would have. So um, organization is big. So call sheets and um, having a, because you have a format of a show. So I'll, I'll use Black Friday Report, for example. So Black Friday Report has a format for the show, right? We a, a opener, mm-hmm. we go to an interview and all these things. But when you before you get green lit, you have to understand who are you green lighting it to? Is this a TV network? Is this a streaming network? Is this a digital network? Because what we did was we shot four episodes just to pitch Black Friday Report. Right. And I didn't have to do that. But again, I'm just the type of person where I want to do something and I want to do it right. Um, So I pay for out of pocket to, to shoot and edit four episodes. And we shot and edit four episodes. And then I started pitching. What I didn't know is when I got it greenlit by a TV network, we had to completely go back into editing and change the entire structure mm. because TV has commercials. The segments have to be a certain length. Um, the um, like the the logos have to be in a certain place. Like there are so many things like understanding before you even get greenlit, who are you trying to greenlight it to? Mm. That's that's going to be important. And then also, like I said, organization, organization, because it was helpful that we had a format written out. So that way, when we did have to change our structure a little bit for TV, we were able to still use the basis of our format. 
Um, and a big shout out to our partners at Peachtree TV, Michael. Um, he's a station manager there. He worked hand in hand with me to make sure that we were able to get that structure um, again, which is why I study Issa Rae's, uh, mm. study her path because she was able to connect with somebody that was that had insight that could give her understanding, and that's what Michael is for me. He gives me, you know, that understanding and also that structure that's needed. So yeah, baby, if if you're doing a TV production or just a production in general, gr- having a green light lit is important. Excuse me, but understanding who you're trying to have it green lit by is also important. Because you'll do all this work and then you'll have it greenlit and it's like, oh, yeah, no, we got to we got to go back to the drawing board. Granted, not, you know, also not a lot of people shoot full episodes the way that I did before they pitched. Um, and I'm just if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it different. And I'm going to also make sure I do it right. And do you think it's a process where you can kind of like get out the exact vision that you had in your mind when you originally pitched it? Or is it kind of like a collaborative effort of like you working with the director and editor and being like, this was kind of my vision and they they might give you like, well, this is might not be possible. Or this might not be this. Like, how do you kind of work with that balance? Because that's something that I deal with heavily when, when it comes to doing stuff, it's just like, part of me doesn't like to do certain things if I can't have it exactly like it was in my head. But then somebody might be like, nah, you might not want it like that because it'll be like this or the camera angles. You should shoot it over here. Actually. Like I've, tried to set up interviews and it's just like, nah, you don't want to shoot it uh, like right in front of the window, the sun will come and then they'll like give you expertise and it'll kind of change your perspective. So how much of that do you kind of give and take when it comes to your vision and like a vision that's more, maybe, maybe even better. I don't know. No, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Sometimes it is better. Am I letting go has probably letting go and delegating has been the toughest thing for me because again, that's your baby, right? It's like, ah, mm-hmm. but it's it's my baby. However, I this is why I think it's so important to surround yourself with people that you truly trust. And um, obviously, you know, you'll run into things. That's just the industry. That's just the way of life. But as much as you can, having the discernment to surround yourself with people you trust and that you know has your back, you know is not going to, okay, just tell you anything just because. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely ran into a couple of times where my vision was, hey, this is blah, 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 blah. And then my director of photography, uh, my DP, or even you know the station manager would be like, yeah, but what about this? And I had to put myself in position to receive because again, it's like you can have a vision in your head and it can be beautiful. And and definitely, I think it's, again, having discernment and understanding of like, okay, hey, is this, is this worth the change? Or do I really want to? Or is this something that I'm, if this doesn't change, is it going to, to make a, a, that big of a difference um, to changing your vision? And it was tough. It still mm. is tough. But I, I, ta- I do take advice from my, even now, I've gotten to the point where I'm like, hey, here's my idea. Do you have any thoughts? Because again, like you said, I can have a thought and somebody can amplify that. And if I close out everybody around me, one, I probably should surround myself with better people. But then two, I could be missing the opportunity to take it to another level. And oh my gosh, my team has definitely, definitely taken it to like, there were there were things that I had ideas for. And then they showed like, they'll be like, hey, no, we should try this. And I'm like, okay, let's run it. And it's like, man, that's... So I wouldn't have thought of that. I, I wouldn't have thought of that. So it's, it's, it's you know, having, being able to let go sometimes to certain things. And again, with people that you trust, pray about it, take your time with it before just surrounding yourself with anybody. Um, because man, I, yeah, without my team, man, yeah, the credit report would still be lit, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be as amazing as it is now you know, having the team that I have, which is why I was like, I intentionally curated my team. Like it was like, no, I want to work with this person and I want him to be my DP, him to be my my cameraman, her to be, you know, and and so on and so forth. So I was very intentional about building my team because I knew I needed people around me that I could trust. So yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. Yeah. Getting a team is definitely important. Um, I didn't understand the importance of it. Like sometimes we, um, 
over romanticize like being a hustler grinder man i did this i produced it i edited it and i've done all of that and like yo that is nothing to be proud like it's it's something just to say like you can do it and i think that's like honorable is you know it's respectable and stuff like that's very respectable but when it becomes like you you said it so many times you've done that it's like okay this is not cute anymore like we're trying to get the best (laughs) optimal product and at the end of the day, it's not about my ego saying that I got this optimal product and I do everything that because that's really just a personal thing just for you to say you did everything. So I can ple- I completely get it. Like having a team is very crucial and important. Um, and I, I didn't want to add. Created- mm-hmm. oh, I'm sorry. You know, I was no, no, add, no. we weren't created to do life alone anyway. Mm. So it's like I feel like it's just a culture of of the world where it's like, oh, you know, I, I'm self-made and da 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 da. I don't want to be self-made because I've seen some self-made people and they be tied at the end. Mm-hmm. It's like you work and do all these things and it's, it's cool. Okay. You're going to be able to wear that badge and have your arms on. Like, yeah, I did that. But when you get to the end, was it worth it? Mm-hmm. Was it that you blew all these people off or that you were, because again, you doing everything is going to wear you out. You're not going to be your best self. Therefore you're not giving the project your best. Therefore the project is not going to be its best. You're not giving the people around you your best. So you're you're wearing yourself out, wearing the people around you. You get to the end of your project or whatever you're working on in life in general. You're doing life self-made. You get to the mm. end. Of, yeah, you got the you got the cars and the houses and the money. But are you happy? Mm. Do you have peace? When you really look back, was it worth it? Mm. 10 out of 10, probably not. Probably I've, not. Seen, I've seen some self-made people. It, I've seen some self-made people. We do, like you said, interviews. And I've I've been, you know, whether it's on the producer end or actually doing the interview. And I see some of these people. And, and again, how we study people, mm-hmm. right, for our profession. I'm studying lifestyles like, I don't want none of that. Mm-hmm. That is not, that is not the cup for me. Like, I'm, I'm good. I want my cup to overflow. I don't want my cup to not have anything or I'd be, you know, dripping and dropping, which is absolutely not. I've met people with money that are not happy. Ooh. And it's, yeah. it's, it's not for me. So mm. absolutely having a team, but outside of projects in life, having people around you is so important. God did not create us to do life alone at all. You need some alone time. Absolutely. Jesus went to the forest, you know, went into the woods. To have is a long time. Like, hey, y'all good, y'all cool and all, but I need my three days. Let me, let me, <laughs> y'all Amen. cute, you know, <laughs> y'all y'all real cute. But I need to go take. So absolutely, absolutely, take the days for yourself and you know, uh, self love and being able because it says, uh, love thy neighbor as thyself. So you must love your yourself first. You must have that love within yourself to then give love to others. When you're on an airplane, what do they tell you? You put your mask mm-hmm. on first, and then you help somebody, right? But you still got to help somebody. So you still need people around you. You may you may be the person that need help putting the mask on. Mm. So yeah, I'm 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 so big on that's the self made life is not true. It is it is mm. not what it all cracked is cracked up to be. I promise you. I've met people. I've talked to people. It's not what it what it all what it what it looks to be. It's not at all. Mm. But yeah, we can keep going. Yeah, because I I that's. That's no, one that, thing that like that, I, I, it's a strong a culture, perfect, man. It's a strong yes, culture. That's a perfect part to hit on because it's just like, man, that hit me so deep because it's like we all tell ourselves stories, man. Like if you ever, I mean, I know you probably interviewed plenty of people and they got the most amazing story, and it's like you just being an insightful person and just the person that you are. Sometimes we interview people and it's like. I know you're just telling yourself a story. That's the story you had to tell yourself to make it okay. We all tell ourselves certain stories to make it okay. And we know that that's not how it went down. It could be relationships. It could be life. It could be business. It could be how you got to the top. And you might've done a whole bunch of people wrong. You did this, but you tell yourself this story. No, I was helping these people. So I did it for these people, which justifies why you did those people wrong. And we all tell ourselves stories. Like I, I seen people just like you said, I seen in their eyes and it's like, you got this money and you build a whole castle and it's like everybody in this castle they agree with this story not understanding that it's a whole world full of people outside this castle that got a whole bunch of stories about you sir or ma'am and it's just like you really built your whole life around what you produce rather than what you did to produce that and I think being intentional is just like man I don't want nothing that I can't 
have a good story about like how I got it. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to tell myself a false story just to say like, yeah, I got this. Well, I put people on, I employ people, blah, blah, blah. It's just like, man, that, that if you had to, to do it on the backs of people or you or you had to do it at the cost of other people, like, nah, man, like, it's and it's just crazy. It. Nobody self-made. Anybody who say they're self-made is just telling themselves a story to justify something like somebody might have did you wrong back in the past. And it's just like, this is my story to be like, look, I didn't need them. Like, yeah, that's deep. Like when you said, I'm like, that's yeah. deep. Because, man, I've told myself stories, man. And then, like, I had to reflect on it later, like. Yo, I was just trying to like I, I put out a tweet today. Like I've been telling my myself my whole life, like a good portion of my life, not my whole life, but like that I was ostracized growing up, like in middle school, high school, and stuff like that. Like I just didn't fit in. Only to read this book. I'm reading this book today. Um, it's called The Mastery of Love. But I was reading this book and it talked about how what what we do to fit in and how we'll sacrifice everything to fit in. And I'm and I had to reflect for a second. I'm like, that's why I didn't fit in. I was not willing to sacrifice everything. Like in my perception of the world was that nobody had to sacrifice anything to be accepted and that they were just naturally accepted by everybody. Like, and that's not the case. A lot of us growing up, we're individuals. We have different special quirky things about us, different things that separate us. And it's just like, we have to give that up to be accepted in a conformist culture. Like we got to get it. And I wasn't willing to give that up. Like, and that's literally, I, I had to reflect on like, dang, why didn't you go to that party? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't it? It's like, cause you just like being you, you just like being at home. You just like doing the things that you was doing. Mm. doing and that gave you more peace than to go there. Like I wasn't, I wanted the, the accolades and to be around the people and to be accepted, but I did not want it as much as I love myself. I, Cause if I did, I'd have gave it up. Like others gave it up. And I was just like, wow, it was empowering for a second. I was like, it, it's empowering now. I was like, I'm like, whoa, like I literally loved myself enough to be like, you know what? I kind of, I want you guys to like me, but I like me a whole lot more. I can't do that. Like, you want me to do this? Like, you just said, man, if you do that, like, I, you cool with us. And I'm like, I kind of like me a little bit. But, and I beat myself up for so many years about that. Like, oh, man, you couldn't fit in. It's just like, yeah, you didn't fit in because you love yourself too much. You didn't want to, like, fit in because you could have, but you just didn't want it that bad. Like, you know how people be like, man, you just didn't do it because you didn't want it. That's true, especially in my life a lot yeah. of times. It's like, if I didn't do it, I really didn't want it. And if I wasn't yeah. there, like, if I wasn't around, if I, like, because if you want somebody to like you, you can put on a face and do all type of fronts or whatever. You can make it happen. But are you willing to sacrifice your truth, your soul for that? And I wasn't. And that was like a deep thing that I had to reflect on. Like, dang, I was not willing to sacrifice that. Like that just healed so many years of my life. Two days reading that book, The Mastery of Love. And that's a promo. Yeah, that was... right. um, <laughs> run, run it up. Well, we need we need a mind on all, 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 all promotional advertising. <laughs> okay. Run that money. But no, and it's so much so it's it's is such a powerful testimony, right? Like it mm. gives you so much confidence instead of saying like, oh, I've been ostracized to say like, no, I just chose me. Mm. There's so much more powerful and, because, and, and we say it all the time, but I don't know if we ever apply it. Like perspective is everything. Mm. Just you taking the time to step back to say, you know what? I just, I just chose me. Mm. Create such a different narrative than I was ostracized. Mm. And it's just Imagine like how many kids you're about to you're yes, about to you yes, don't even know that right yes. there. You healed so many years of your life, your life, but you mm. prevented so much trauma for somebody else's life. That's gonna hear mm. this. And then you that's gotta a, double that's a word. Then, then you gotta double back and you really have to like do the work of healing some of the advice that you gave from like a, a hurt place. Like I've gave a lot of advice from a place. And that's why I tell people like at all times I'm healing constantly. Cause when I get back on that mic, you know, um, cause we, you know, doing things to structure breaking the machine and start uh, doing it uh, again. So we, but we trying to take it to enough, we doing it, we taking it to another level, but it's so many conversations and different things that I need to touch on that. Like, Oh, I was wrong. Like I was wrong. I said this and I, I was wrong. Like, for me to like embrace that narrative, like for so long that I was done, like ostracized and stuff. And granted, yeah, that was the, the 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 effect, but that's not how we got there. Like it was a deeper root. Like 
you know, and just to to reach that, like, yeah, that was healing. Like, that's something I've been battling with for probably the last six, seven years, like, for real. And just for it to be wow. healed, like, I'm like, whoa, I need to go get some ice cream or something. I just, I just need to, like, I feel great just, just to be able to feel that. It was just, it was just beautiful. Just like, wow. Um, and just, it's just powerful for you to say that. Just like, man, ain't nobody self-made. We tell ourselves a lot of different stories, man. And it's just, it's just powerful just to be able to embrace who we are. Just like, we all need people. We all need people. And you know, it, you, it's okay to tell yourself stories, but you know, at, at the end of the day, it's all it is is more important to really embrace the truth and your truth. You know, so yeah, no, I'm with that 110 percent. In the spirit, some snaps. I say, in the spirit of the truth, I wanted to touch on some um, transparency Tuesdays. Uh, what 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 uh, inspired you to start that? And um, what 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 kind of caused you to pivot out from um, doing those little segments on um. Uh, Instagram and uh, on social media. Man, come on, talk about research. Sheesh, that's crazy. Um, yeah, so Transparency Tuesday started. I used to, um, the corporate job before I got into media, I used to travel a lot. Mm. Um, and I would go into, so I used to work with like different doctor's offices and I would go in and train them. And, you know, wow. we code switch, right? Like, yeah. naturally, you know, from being little yeah. here, my mama, you know, y'all sit down, be quiet. Hello, you know, <laughs> you know, answering the phone or or somebody pick, you know, she been on hold with the operator, um, and, and it would just it became very draining to like be code switching mm. so much because and not, not in the sense of like changing my voice, not as you know, not that simple, but being in a room with with doctors and sometimes having to like just okay, let me let me not say and take certain things that I did not like, I, I did not agree with or I didn't like. And sometimes like in the workplace, I would have to be like, okay, look, you know, just as much as you want respect for me, I'm, yeah, I'm going to need respect for you as well. But it became very draining. So when I would get back to the hotel and this was before I locked my hair and everything and I let go of certain hairstyles, but I used to take my wig off, take my makeup off and like, just, oh, thank you. Like, okay, let me just be transparent about what I'm feeling. And I don't know, one night, one, one night I was on um, Instagram live and did, did exactly that. I was like, you know what y'all like, and literally on live, took my wig off, was taking on my makeup. I was like, let's just, let's be naked together. And let's, let's just have transparent conversations. And I would do that and people would love it. And, you know, people would DM me like, oh, you know, I, I love this segment. And then I was going to take it a step further. This was, um, so I had stopped for a little bit because I had stopped traveling. And I would be at home. Typically when I'm at home, my hair is not done. Like I look a hot mess in, in some, like it's it's one of those posts where it's like, I go from looking like a homeless person <laughs> to, you know, somebody that's going on a red carpet or or something of that sort. Um, and yeah, so when I would, when I was home, I didn't, like I didn't do it because I didn't have on anything. And typically when I'm home, I'm doing a million things. And so it came back up and I was like, okay, well now I want to like start bringing people and interviewing people. And I actually did. And what's crazy am I like, I think I recorded maybe like four or five interviews and mm. it was, they were all beautiful. Like it was, it was so exciting. And then honestly, I think the pandemic happened and I just fell into a depression, you know, being away from people, if I'm being honest, you know, being away from people and um, it just being different, right? Because mm -hmm. COVID, COVID was different for a lot of people. For me, it was me used to being around people and that's how I like giving my energy. Um, and I got a lot of healing in that too, which like you said, and, and to this day, baby, I'm still healing. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am, I am forever healing, but Honestly, it just after after COVID, it never came back. And then Black Friday report kind of took over my my focus. But it's so crazy you said that because the other day, and, it's, and I, I thank God for for this conversation. The other day I was looking at the footage and I was like, man, I need to do something with this because these are people who have told their stories. And, you know, I think it's something that can continue because I do think it's it's a thing. And it doesn't have to be code switching. It can just be in general. Sometimes we put on a front when we go out into public, right? Because whether you, you ask somebody like, oh, how are you doing? Nine times out of 10, they can be like, oh, I'm doing good. 
Meanwhile, their world can be melting down. Not many people are going to be like, you know, actually today is not a good day. Because mm-hmm. even if they do, the person that's asking, they're probably not prepared to even, like they're just mm-hmm. asking out of rhythm, right? Out of, <laughs> out of this is what I'm used to doing. They're probably not prepared to receive that somebody is going through something or, you know, to even know what to say to follow up. So we all wear this like, and not, I'm not going to say everybody, a lot of people, we wear this, this facade or this face, like, let me say face when I go out. And Mm. I think for me, like just being transparent, because there's a a difference between being transparent and being honest. Being honest is if I ask you a question, you can give me an honest response. Mm. And a friend taught me this. Transparency is, I don't even have to ask. You're transparent Mm. enough to just share with me. Like I can ask you a question about, hey, you know, what's your favorite color, right? And maybe that color triggers something for you that you're experiencing or something you thought of. And you just, hey, you know, I want to I be transparent about what that did for me and being able to release that, right? So mm. transparency, transparency Tuesdays was exactly that. And it doesn't have to be on a Tuesday, but it was just taking one day of the week to, hey, take off, take it all off, take the makeup off, take, the, take, the, take everything off. And it doesn't have to be just in a physical realm. Take the fake happy off, take the mm. smile off. Take the I'm okay off. Take the, the, the robot responses. Take it out. And let's just be honest. First of all, how are you? What are, what are the things that are going through your mind? What do you need right now? What is the most thing that, that's troubling you? What, you know, what are you most happy about? What excites you? But, but being able to really get to the root of what we're feeling, which is what therapy has taught me, like getting to the root of what you feel mm. can happen in that transparency. Ooh, yeah. that's deep. Uh, man, therapy is a whole nother conversation. I'm like, man, that's. I love it. That's that, man. I, that's deep. And I, I hadn't planned on deep diving into that, but that, that kind of did trigger something. But um, I, I did want to um, ask you about the importance of networking because you talk about going live. And um, I've definitely seen you on live. I, it was just one conversation that was really insightful and powerful i think he was having it with godfrey and flame monroe i was on the, i i forgot how long the live was it was like an hour hour and a half i was on there for like an hour i ain't even gonna hold you up i was i was on there just listening to a powerful conversation that uh y'all was having but you I, I forgot what time this was but you would constantly be on live having conversation with different people and um i know that's just on instagram but outside of you know social media you're having conversation and stuff talk about the importance of networking and kind of why that's so important in you know the media the world of media and um because i have my own thoughts you know especially in podcasts and it's like very elitist you know what i'm saying and it, it, just to be real especially black podcasts and it's very elitist mm-hmm. and you you got to it's like three people that you got to know and if you don't know those people like three big head then it's like little people underneath there and it's crazy because it, it's it's different but talk about networking and, and the importance of networking yeah now i want to hear from you as well um yeah i mean for me yeah so that that conversation um again very authentic um i used to think of networking as like hi my name is such and such and i do this Mm. Um, and you know, some, some people may take that approach for me, it, that did, that never worked because it's very uncomfortable. It doesn't feel authentic from me. Um, but there is power in networking in the sense of, um, authentic conversations. Mm. So, um, you know, whether I'm having conversations on, um, you know, Instagram or any social medias, when I'm going out to events, like my approach to networking is not, hi, my name is such and such, and I do this. I first want to know about you. Mm. Hey, how you, same way, you know, when you when you meet a friend, hey, how you doing? My name is Symphony, how are you? Okay, so tell me, what is it that you do? Okay, blah, blah, blah. And then asking questions to, to understand, exa- and not just asking to see what can I get out of it, mm. but truly asking like, oh, because I, we're we're here in this space together, let's use this time wisely. So, being able to first understand them because also on the back end as well. And I'll, I'll share this piece of something that I'm, I'm learning in this journey is anytime you have a partnership, right? So many times people come to the partnership about this is what I want and this is what I need. And this is, but I guarantee if you get an understanding of what that person needs and how you can provide value to them, that partnership is going to be a that partnership is going mm-hmm. to flourish a lot more 
than you starting with, oh, hey, I need, or holding your hand out. Um, quick backstory, even, and again, this is just who I am authentically, right? So backstory, um, when I was starting out with, with Black Friday Report, um, Michael Killer Mike Render came on and um, as the executive producer, co-executive producer. But before, before that even happened, created a presentation mm. for Killer Mike. Mind you, I knew him. I met him through social media. Um, he, I, he, I watched Trigger Warning and he made a, a bet for, or not even a bet, a challenge for us all to support Black-owned business every Friday. So I would do that, but I would also tag him and say, okay, well, who are you supporting this week? Because you, you told you told us mm. to support. So who who holding you accountable? Let me hold you accountable. And he took a liking to that because, again, holding him accountable, most people weren't doing that. So him and I met. We um, He you know brought me to the shop. I met his shop manager, Kim. And I had an idea of, oh, hey, let's, let's bring Black Friday live and let's actually bring mm. it to the shops because that's what the barbershops were known for back in the day. You know, you go and have conversations. People come in selling cakes, clothes, all these things like yep. let's bring let's bring businesses to the shop where they can sell, you know, their their items and things like that. He liked it. And he was like, OK, cool. Let's let's run it. Let me connect you with Kim. So we did that. And then he came to me. and He was like, hey, you know, I really love what you're doing, but I want you to create something for social media. But that's for you so that I can support it. This is Killer Mike talking to me. Mm. And I was like, OK, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can do that. My mind doesn't know how to stay small. Like I was mm. like, social media is like, it's cool. Like I love social media. You know, it has its perks and, and all. But I was like, oh, let, instead of just social media, let's create a show. So then that's how I created Black Friday Report. And even though he was the one to say, hey, create something for social media. In my mind, it's not. And even though we have a relationship at this point, I'm calling him big bro. He's calling me little sis. Like mm. we have a we have a connection. But when it comes to the business, I'm still not going to approach you like you're my big bro. I'm mm. going to approach you like the businessman that you are. So I created a presentation. Absolutely hideous. Now that I look back at it, absolutely hideous. And I was like, hey, I have a, um, you know, an idea for my for the project. I want to present it to you. He invited me to the studio and I came and presented the, the presentation to him. Hey, this is what I'm thinking. He was like, OK, cool. Let's run it. Even when I started the project. So that's when I presented it for him to come on as co-executive producer. When I started the project, I never asked him for money. I never asked him to, you know, hey, and not not from a sense of any ego mm. or, oh, I want to do this by myself because I was not doing it by myself. I had a team. But from a state of, I appreciate the value that you have as a person. I appreciate you, you as a person and, and, and I value what you're going to bring to the table, being who you are. Not, not even the celebrity, but just the insight. I love what you're doing for our community you'll be able to help me in, in my mind of like, hey, here's an idea. What are, what are your thoughts on it? I don't want your money. I don't want mm -hmm. the typical things that people come to a celebrity for to say, hey, hey, here's my idea. Can I get some money? But instead it's like, hey, if you can just assist me on the back end as far as the knowledge, then I'll take it from here. I'll mm -hmm. do the groundwork. And I did. Did the groundwork. Of course, like I said, I invested in myself, um, invested in it myself. Um, I brought on a team, a mate, like I, I can't tell you, like, I love my team. So much. I love them so much. Oh my gosh. They're so amazing. Brought, um, brought everybody together. We're doing this together. And we, we hit, we make the four episodes. I talked to his manager. So he set up a call for with me, him, and his manager. And here's what his manager said to me. He said, at this point, if there's anything that you need from me, anything that you need from me mm. or Mike, let us know when we got you. And he said, what set you apart from any other thing anybody else has presented is you never asked for money. You never, it was never an intention of, oh, mm. hey, I just want a handout. Here's my idea. Can you give me some money for it? He was like, seeing you do the groundwork and put in the work is like, oh, that, that makes all the difference. So networking is more than just, oh, hey, how are you doing? I need this. Get a sense of understanding of who you're talking to. One, you never know the person that you're probably asking for something. You may not even really want to be a, be in partnership with them. It's mm. so important. Like people, um, La Russell says this, but I, I, I've always thought this, but La Russell, he's a um, rapper out of yeah. LA. He said it so profoundly. And I was like, I, I've always said it, but it just didn't sound that good. But he was talking about doing, doing business. So many people say, oh, don't take business personal. 
But for me, and again, I can't speak for everybody yeah. else, but for me, I'm not going to take it personal since I'm going to hold it over your head like, oh, that that's who you are. But if you do bad business with me, mm-hmm. or if you, you start with, oh, well, this is how business is, I'm good. I don't, I don't want this partnership. I've had to... I've had to walk away from a podcast mm. because somebody that I trusted and that I that I thought I had a relationship with handed me a contract and the contract didn't make sense. Yeah. And I went back and said, this does not make sense. Oh, well, that's how the typical. Oh, well, this isn't I'm not typical. This this Ooh. isn't going to work. So even though that person, they have a amazing business, right? Like it's it's it would be one of the situations that you look at and say like, oh, hey. Hey, how you doing? My name is Symphony. I want such and such and such. Had I did that, had that been my approach, I would mm. be wrapped up in a contract that didn't that does not make sense for me or my future. Mm. I walked away, I walked away from that. I lost friends from that. You know, people that I, that I thought were were I thought they were my friends. God reveals all things. Thank you, God. Reveals all things because again, I didn't start with, "Hey, my name is Symphony. I want such and such." No, I'm going to be intentional. Let me learn more about you. Mm. And then if business comes, okay, let, let's talk through the business. So networking is so important. I I, I, I want to change how people, some people, because I, I can't you know speak for all people, but I want to change how some people view networking because sometimes you just think it's like, oh, hey, what can I get out of it? Yes, it's important for you to have a, a equal partnership, but it is so important to make sure not, not even just on the money end of things, but is this person aligned with you? Is this somebody that you really want to be wrapped up in contract with? Because baby, if you if you do bad business with me, trying to do bad business, I don't. I'm good. I, mm. That that ain't what God had for me. That I, that, that is not what He planned for me. So I'm big on networking. Into I'll say this last thing. Another thing I've learned again. I do a lot of studying on people. Issa Rae was one of the people that I mentioned. Issa Rae talks about networking with people that are here with you instead of always trying to, mm, oh, let me go to the up. bigger person. Mm. Yeah. And it depends on the industry, right? But I do think it is important while you're building and of course, pitch, reach for the stars, all the things, but still making your, make sure you're networking across because had I not networked across to my peers, I wouldn't have been able to, to come together to build Black Friday Report so that now we as a collective can pitch to a bigger network. And now not only am I able to to feed myself and, and pour into myself, but now I'm pouring into the others that group with me together. So networking is very important. And just, yeah, y'all got to network with the right folks because people be mm. out here with a, with a smile on their face. Oh my gosh, I love your work. There's mm. so much value that you bring. And then baby, when they slide that paper across the table, it does not reflect. It's like, but when we talked, when we had all 10 meetings, you was telling me how much value I had, how much you've seen in me, what you can see for the future, what you and mm-hmm. I'm like, the crazy thing is with the the experience that I'm talking about, mm-hmm. they wanted me to help build their network, right? So there was no network that existed for their their podcasting realm. Mm-hmm. You want me to help build your network, but I'm looking at the contract like, but you're giving me a typical, a typical contract, but it's not a typical situation. Mm-hmm. So it's so important to, and again, you can get it wrong sometimes because I have in that situation, I, I thought this person was, oh, cool. Like, yeah, I'm still read the paper. I'm still read the paperwork. You know, we can network all day long. This can be great, right? You can be, it can feel good. It's flowing. You all, you and the, you know, you, oh yeah, this is, this is good. But just make, just make sure no matter who it is, you're always past the networking. If you do move into partnership or you do move into anything, mentorship, whatever, just make sure that you're always paying attention throughout the entire process. Never get too comfortable. Never. And I know I said a lot there, but networking is important. I'll, I'll sum it up with that. Networking is, is very important, but it's also important to understand who you're networking with um, so that you move into the right places. No, everything you said was needed. You didn't, you didn't, you said a lot, but you, it was needed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We, we supposed to say a lot. You say a lot more like that. <laughs> That's the point of it. They need all of it. And I need all of it because this is you giving me game, especially for for different things that I have you know, aspirations for in the future. You know, and this is why these conversations are so important just to give that insight, because a lot of people see what you do and they want to do it, but they don't know what it takes. Just like I said, I didn't know what it takes to run a show. And then I saw the structure and the I'm like, whoa, this is different. I thought it was just like a pie. I'm like. 
this is different. You know, and then they say, no, do it again. Do the take again. I'm like, I'm not used to this. I don't like it. Like, so it's just, it's a different, so you, you got to understand there's levels to it. You know what I'm saying? This is not just no, 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 no little boy stuff. This is big boy stuff. Like this is big girl stuff. Like this is real talk. Like you really got to be surgical with it. And, 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 and it, it but I, I like that piece that you're talking about with networking because um, you have to come in with your intentions out front. Because if your intentions aren't mm-hmm. clear up front, people don't know what you want to, you know, what you would, how to build with you. Because I used to tell people a lot of time when I was in college, I used to always tell people I wanted to work at the Pistons Arena. That used to be, the, that used to be my thing. I want to work at the Pistons Arena. So then people would be like, oh yeah, my uncle, he does something at the Pistons Arena. They would have never told me that had I not came with my intentions clear. See, because people want to bring value to you, especially if you're interesting, they want to bring value to you. Oh yeah, well I know, hey man, I always wanted to do a song with Snoop Dogg. Well, my uncle knows Snoop Dogg. Like, that's how yeah. people are. They want to be able to relate to you they can't give you no gain they can't give you no connection if you don't come in with your intentions clear you trying to play the field and trying to figure out how you can sneak your way in it's keeping you from getting in you 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 you're gonna be at the back door the whole time when the real party's at the front door and you have to knock out the front door to really get to where it's really happening or you're gonna be in the, the back room preparing the meal ain't nothing wrong with that but you're trying to get on the ballroom you're trying to get where the real action is happening so you can network and do your thing but what 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 I see with with networking and um it's really just about bringing value to value like Wallow says you got to bring value to value and people are going to be able to give you put you in better situations once they see your value and sometimes you have the value and they'll think that you don't see your value and they'll try to play you like man I hope she don't know her value I hope you don't know her, his value so I'm gonna play him like this are you, do you know that you worth more than that like yeah I know I'm worth a whole lot more than that I ain't doing that. But you can only know that once you're doing the work, doing the work yourself really gets you to understand what value is. Like if you had your own platform, you had your own following different things, you can come different. You talk different. You walk different. You know, I I, I, I don't talk the same as I did when I first started. I talk different because I know what it is. You know what I'm saying? I hear hearing people talking about numbers and different. Things. I know the numbers. I see the numbers. I have the analytics. I, you, you can't you can't fool me. But another thing yeah. about that is when you talk about when when, when, I, when I'm speaking about bringing value and understanding your value, it's because you know what like a, a typical contract would look like. You know what a typical like like you said it was typical. You wouldn't know that that was typical had you not had previous experience. You have to have that previous experience to know what's typical and what's acceptable. What's you where you're at right now? Like you know so. That yeah. definitely helped me understand that, you know, just just understanding that you have to get your feet where you have to get in the game and for you to really understand, like, OK, I'm at a place where this is no longer acceptable. This is not where I'm at right now. And people are going to try to downplay you. But what I was speaking about in the beginning with with um, elitism and all that other stuff. Um, and I know we pushing the time. So let, let me let me say this. No, quick. you're fine. No, you're fine. I, well, I know you you may have things, but you're fine. I have time. OK, praise Thank you. Uh, Cause I, you know, I don't want to rest. This is important. This is important, but just in, yeah, in terms of the podcast and industry, it's just, I did notice that there's a lot of people out here who have a lot of big followings and stuff like that, that aren't really mainstream. Right. So what is your goal? Does your goal to be mainstream? Is your goal to be loved? Is your goal to have a following? Is your goal to get a message out there? My, my goal for a long time was to be in the mainstream and I ain't gonna lie. It still is not because of me or my, but it's the message. I want to be able to tap in with certain people. And in order to do that, I felt like I needed to be in the mainstream, which is not necessarily true. It's really all about relationships. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's really all about relationships and just who you can leverage and pull on because, um, I wanted, I just, there's certain people that I watch an interview and I know you probably are the same. I watch an interview and I'm like, mm, they could have asked them this. They could have asked them that. They mm-hmm. could have said it like this. The reason they answered it like this is because they asked it like that. Dude is laughing in the quarter. The other dude got a Hennessy in his hand. They not taking it serious. Like prime example, right? I watched the drink champs interview with Jocelyn. Uh, Jocelyn, I believe her name is drink champs. Yeah. interview. She did. That was one of my favorite interviews of all time. Like I, I, lo- yeah. I love Jocelyn. I have to put that out. There. I, I love her personality. I love the way she comes. Look, she's just so authentic. I love people like that. It's just, it's hilarious. It's entertaining. But it's also real. It's real. A lot of people be like, oh, you like? I can't. I can't. I, I just love the realness. And um, mm-hmm. how like it's certain people like Mike Tyson, you know, certain people like that. Dick Gregory, they just speak from a place that's just like no filter. I'm, and I just love that. Yeah. I just love it. And I hope to live my life like that one day. But. She was just in there and she was breaking down, crying, just talking about the stuff she went through growing up. 
And they just like, no, we're not about to do that here. We're not about to do it here. Give her another drink. I'm just like, oh my God, that's the best part. Like, and it's not about the sadness, but it's about what she's coming from a real, she's opening. And that's what she said. She said, I can't do this with all these boys in the room. She said, see, and, and I know I can't do this with all these boys because y'all don't understand because y'all talking mm-hmm. about the grind. Y'all talking about overcoming. I'm talking about my life. I'm talking about the, I, I saw the the needles. She said, I saw the needles on the ground growing up. We be playing soccer with the, with, with the, the paper mache ball and all this. I'm just like, wow. It's certain interviews that I see and I'm just like, man, should have been my show because I swear to God, I'd have gave you that moment. I'd have let you, man, I'd have had the tissue. I'd have been crying running. too. Like, I'd have, what you, you, you said, running. <laughs> I did, but that, that's what I'm talking about. So it, it, that's what the mainstream is to me. It's like getting access to those people. Cause I didn't understand what it, what it was like to get people on until I really got into the, like, to really trying to get people on, reaching out to management, reaching out to PR. And it's like, okay, what syndication are you on? What's in a, I had to show people my numbers and all type of stuff. Like, you know, so it, it, it's interesting. And I've been blessed to be able to, um, like you said, through social media presence, get a lot of people on just to, based off of them, you know, being supporters of the work that I do and stuff like that. So, but other than that, it's like, dang, they're impossible. Like there's certain people, you have the numbers to have them on, but you're not aligned with this media conglomerate or this media conglomerate over there. So they're like, yeah, you might have numbers bigger than the radio station that we're about to head to, but you're not tapped in with the network or you're not tapped in with the larger conglomerate. So we can't mess with you. And it's just like, damn. So it's all, it's elitist in a way. And it's about four or five individuals, three, four individuals and in the black podcast space that really run a lot of people and everybody's not a villain. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's not a villain, but it's just like, it's a certain X factor that you have to have a certain likability. Obviously, you know, if, if you want to be aligned with certain people that you, you have to get along with them, you have to be able to get into those circles. But, um, it's really just about yeah. value. It's really just about yeah. value. It's about getting the value in order to, for people to be like, I got to work with you. I got to work with you. And it, cause it's like, you didn't do nothing wrong, but it's a certain flavor. It's a certain thing, a certain X factor that you have to have. Cause like I said, a lot of people have big numbers and they don't have a deal. They don't have a deal. And I thought a deal was the, the apex and it's not, it's really not. Because when I look at what the minimalists do, they're really my blueprint for what I want to do mm-hmm. with podcasts. And like, you know, they have several documentaries on Netflix. They have hundreds of thousands of listeners, uh, you know, throughout all their platforms and stuff. And um, that's kind of what I pattern myself after. And they're completely independent. They do the stuff to all themselves. And, you know, they, they do live shows and different things. And I'm like, that's kind of what I see me going into the more I went when I first started I just wanted to get a deal I did I wanted yeah. to get a deal because I thought that was the quickest way to get the guests and stuff but once you know how to do it once you know how to do it off the muscle once you understand how to reach out to somebody and get them on and stuff like that and um it's really beautiful it, it's really beautiful it is you want to, yeah no you, it, it is and I and I think too like the the, the two, a couple things here the value and relationships like mm. Yes, bring value. And I and I think you should always walk into the room and know, like, this is what I'm bringing. But that mm. relationships piece, like, again, it has to be very genuine. Like, yes, all, like anybody that I partner with or even it doesn't even have to be a partnership, just somebody that I've networked with. I'll send them an email or reach out to them just to check on them mm. because I'm treating it like an actual relationship. I'm not treating you like a transaction. Mm. People feel that like you can feel when somebody reaching out, you reaching out and they starting out with like, hey, how are you doing? And, you know, it's coming like, yeah, I was just reaching out because I da, 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 da. like there's a different in like difference in like bringing your value and, and telling someone about your value. And then you trying to take advantage of a situation. So mm. I love that you brought up value. Like, I think those two things have to go hand in hand. Right. Because like you said. Even going into and 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 I'm gonna to touch on that too. Going into like these big plot, it's it's not about the numbers, it's not about who you are. Because I've seen on the back end, like some celebrities can't even get certain celebrities on their show or or, or certain things. Like they're it's about who you know and who you have a relationship with. Like mm. and that and and do they know you have value? So um yeah, I think networking, those two th- I think those are the two perfect words. Have value, bring value, mm. and establish an actual relationship and not a transaction. Mm. So important when networking. And then as far as getting into, I think a lot of us, right, we're like, yeah, I want to get into the industry. 
Like I want to let, let just, just, I just want my foot in the door. Cause even, mm-hmm. even with me, it's like, I would love to be on a bigger platform so that I can reach more people. That is the goal. That's one of the goals. Right. But I think the transition that we're about to see or that we're seeing mm-hmm. is like even, and I'm, I'm going to use Hollywood or like, you know, the industry. It's not the way that it used to be. Like it's not the value is starting to switch a little bit, you know, and it's, it's social, social media has its ups and its downs. Right. But I think social media is really changing. I think one person that I use it, like country Wayne, what we see him doing. Right. Now understanding the back end of the people that he's reaching and then how he's able to provide his, for his family, and like all these other artists, like, and I know podcasting is, is a little bit different, but keep going in the space that you're going because what we're seeing with social media and Hollywood right now, like with time, things are going to continue. Like it's going to be a big, a bigger transition, especially right now. Like, you know, there's a writer strike and like all these other things happen in the industry, but social media and like having a loyal audience that believes in you and listens and loves what you're doing. And obviously you have that, like I listen to your podcast because I know that I'm going to get something insightful. It's valuable. I'm not just going to walk away. Like, and I walk away feeling good too. Cause you have people that, you know, every now and again, you get a little, little joke in there, you know, every now yeah. and again, you get a smile and all these things. Um, but I think too, yes, that's the goal. And I think it's going to be a beautiful thing. And you're going to continue to reach so many people. But I'm I'm challenging myself to to not bank on that door being the avenue to get me to the audience. Mm. Because yeah, when you're a light, it's attract to you. Mm. So I'm just leave, I'm gonna just leave that there because I it a manifest when it's gonna, when it's yes. a manifest. But you bring you bring so much value, and sometimes people don't see it when you want them to, but. Mm. When you keep moving in your space, when you're operating, God gave me, um, I think I was talking to one of my close friends and I've been in a place where people are asking me, like, okay, what's next? You've done Black Friday report. What's next? What, what's next? And I never, again, never intended to be where I am, but I feel like God has been calling me to be still. Mm. Right. And, and one of my friends put it perfectly the other day at dinner was, you know, when you're a light, you're in the dark and you're moving. It's hard for people to like. How am I gonna? How am I gonna? Which way do I go to get to the light? But when you're a light and you just sit still, then things can be. Uh, then things can attract to you. Mm. So sometimes we're so focused on okay, let, I gotta get to this this door because I want to you know reach more people. But sometimes we just need to be still mm. and be the light that we are and allow things to be attracted to us. So that's that's where I am. It's like mm. Black Friday report was given to me. Like God blessed me with Black Friday report, right? Because again, I never intended to be here. It was never my intention, right? And where I am now is like being still in this blessing. How can I sit here? How can I amplify this light? How can I make this light bigger? Not by moving around, but by being still and staying focused here and then allowing those things to be attracted because I am a light, you are a light. Mm-hmm. You have to know that you're like when people will talk to you and they're able, e- even you like being able to watch that interview and say like, man, I would have gave her that moment. I would have given her the space. She she needs that. And not mm-hmm. only does she needs that, somebody else needs that. Yes. 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 Somebody else. So and 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 I'm I'm I, I want to see that happen. So my girl, come on, come on over here. Mm-hmm. Come on over here because there's oh man that could have been power that could have been a powerful moment not just for her sh- sharing her testimony but to see a room full of men mm. God thank you God a, 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 seeing a man be able to allow some because right the world says like men aren't emotionally intelligent they aren't emotionally available like all these things but that's not in true for all men I'm gonna speak specifically to black men. Mm. Because that's a big passion of mine. Some that's like been laid on my heart, like the spaces that are created for y'all and just the things that are, that are put on y'all that moment. Mm. Oh my gosh. To see, I'm, I'm going to place a mod there. Like watching and seeing you give her the space 
to cry and let it out and ask her more questions and, you know, give her, you know, just continue the conversation and not steer away from it or try to, hey, you know, we can't do that. Here, here, take this, you know, do this. Mm -hmm. We've masked our pain long enough. We've done it long enough. We, oh, you know, black folk, we, we gonna, we gonna laugh about our pain. We gonna kick, 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 ha. Mm-hmm. But like sometimes you just need a space. Let let it out, baby. Let it out. You know, girl, oh, grandma, be like, come on, baby, let it out. That mm-hmm. moment would have been crazy. Mm-hmm. But Ahmad noticed it. Ahmad is a different light. So you're going to be able to create spaces when somebody comes on and they need that moment. Somebody else needs that moment and you're going to give it to them. Be still in that. That is a gift. Because most people probably were watching it like, yeah, man, she can't be, she can't be doing all that. Like, nah, uh-uh. mm-hmm. not everybody, not everybody would have noticed that, but you did. So be that light that you are, because things are going to come to you. Even I pray that this interview, even I, like, I want that snippet of you explaining that and being able to have that understanding. I pray that it reaches, and it doesn't even have to be her, but somebody that needs that space. Yes. Because even though, yeah, there are certain like podcast leads and there are certain managers that are going to tell you, oh, no, they da 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 da. But the power of social media is it can go straight directly to who it needs to go to. Mm. So it's going to get to somebody that's going to say, you know what, I need that space where I can have a conversation. Because there are some things that I've been feeling that I want to be transparent about. Mm. I want that I want to share. And Amai has that space for me. Mm. Let me call my manager up. Yeah, hey, I want to do a um, I want to do an interview with Amon. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I know. I didn't really ask all that. Um, either you can do it, or I can make it happen. <laughs> and I'm be looking, I'm be looking at drinking my water like Amon better. Ask, he better ask them questions. You, you talking that talk, man? You talking that talk? I'm like, woo! I say that that's that therapy. You you better fess with all that good energy. I'm like, man, I can see it now. I'm almost teared up thinking about it. I'm dead serious. I'm just like, ooh, let me not cry. Like, this is deep, man. Ooh, that's deep. Just because that, to, that you can cry. Mm, you can cry. I definitely so just have as much one as you're giving. Yeah, okay, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely have on one of these episodes before I was going through it. I was just talking to my man Murdoch on here. I'm breaking down crying like, oh crap, I can't believe I'm crying on the show. But it, it's nothing it's nothing wrong with crying on the show. I cried on Breaking the Machine as well. I, I cried on there. We did an episode called Father Time and this is not too long after Spanks, uh, my co-host Spank, his father passed away and we just crying. I'm thinking about my father and stuff. And, you know, I, and I could clip it out. I could cut it out, you know, just post-production and stuff, but I got to put it in. You know, I got to keep it in because, you know, if, if if my audience don't see me do it, then, hey, we, we, I, they got to they got to understand somebody that they might look up to or like, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, that, that we can be vulnerable, too, man, and that we go through stuff, too. So that's the most important thing about just vulnerability. And that when I was talking about Transparency Tuesdays, like and I'm glad that you share, you know, why it transitions and the things that you've been doing, because. You know, for me, it's tough. You know, it's tough to be transparent sometimes, especially when you got people and your story involves other people. And it's just like, mm. man, I'm, I'm I'm being real, but it's just like, I don't want to hurt nobody else who's involved in this story, you know? And that's the hardest part. Like a lot of people be like, oh, me, you scared? No, I ain't scared to say what I got to say. I'm scared how the people who was involved in the story going to feel. And I ain't really even scared. I just care about how they feel because I'm an empathetic person. But I ain't even scared of how they feel. Like I'm, I'm empathetic to how they feel because they they not ready for, to that be exposed. I ain't even say their name. But just to hear me recite the story hurt them so bad. And I ain't even need to I didn't say their name, but they know who I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? And it's just... It's just like, whoo. But yes, when I watch that interview and I watch interviews all the time, like so, I'm just like, whoo. But it's just like those special people like yourself um, and certain people in the journalism world, they have an effect. And we being we're intentional about that, like Charlie Rose or or, or um, um, I can't remember, Larry King or these different people. When you come on a platform, they have a certain and it's just like you're not at no other you here right now. And that's what I wanted to give. I always wanted to get like, you know, you on breaking the machine right now. You you know, you're on one on one with a mind the poet. Like this is a different platform. We're not about to do these games and, and everybody, other people, they're going to play them games. And that's cool because we like playing it, but not here. We're going to be real. We're going to be open. I'm, I'm here for you to be be you. You know what I'm saying? Play it because we can do all of that. But man, like 
that I, I needed that. Like, cause I'm, we gonna manifest that. Like I'm, I'm manifesting that like for real, like that's all I care about. I don't care about money, nothing. Else. I just want to have those voices in the culture that people respect and look up to. Just, I want to, I want them to have those moments that they need to heal more people. Cause I've seen so many and I'm like, Oh my God, I wish they would have delved deep in that. Cause that replenishes my soul. Like that made yeah. me feel good. Like, man, like, woo, like, when when I get vulnerable on my show and I put those clips out and people, oh man, I felt that this person died. Like that's what it does. It ain't about the money. It's not about the, it ain't about nothing else. And that's what I tell people all the time. And I understood and we can end this here, but I understood what people talk about. Like if you're just in it for the money, you're not going to go far. Cause for real, like I, I've podcasted for years, man. I have invested more money in the last, in my podcast in the last two months than I have in the last two years. Like okay. thousands of dollars just to get the production together, to get a studio together, all types of other stuff, you know, but it's just like, if I did it to make money, I lost a lot where I didn't lose the money, but I invested more money than I've made from podcasts. And I've definitely invested a lot of money. And it's just like, it's not about the money. It's about literally healing somebody who's in middle schools and elementary schools and, and some young, cause that's what I needed. And it's really just about, I swear to God, that's all it's about. Nothing else, nothing else. And uh yeah, no, that's that's beautiful. That's beautiful because what what's for you is gonna come to you. Mm. Again, you're you're a light, be a light. That's it's you're being a light. That's why mm. that's what's most important to you because you're being that light. So with the light, all things that, that are meant for you are gonna come. Um, I do want to say this before we close out, because this was a person that um didn't she came to mind, but I, I couldn't say the name um mm. at this time. I don't know why. Anyway, um Angie Martinez. Mm. has a platform of conversations where that's somebody else life. that I study in the journey. Yeah. In a journalistic mm. um, aspect, because in those conversations, like when someone has an emotional moment, like it, uh, she allows it to happen. Um, mm. There are certain things that I look at that I'm like, dang, I wish, you know, this is not, but that is somebody when you ask me um, who were some people, Angie Martinez does a great job of creating spaces and making it feel very homey and like, from the aesthetics to the conversations. Um, so big shout out to to Angie Martinez and what she's doing with In Real Life. Yep, like you said, In Real, In Life, Real Life podcast. Um, yeah. Podcast, yeah. So yeah, that's one that that I look at. Sometimes definitely like, I wish it would have went here, but just to even have those spaces where you can have conversations about, you know, things that are in real life and not just uh, in the, the the social media world. <laughs> Of things, so yeah. I like Ebro too. Ebro is a good interview too. He's yes. supposed to actually come on, so and hopefully we'll be able to make that happen. But it, um, it I reached will. out to him it to get will. him on. But man, I, I like I like the way he conducts the interviews. He has a lot of range of guests on, and um, yeah, it's just it's good. It's some good journalists out here, and this has been a master class in journalism. I know before we ended, I definitely wanted to figure out where can we find Black Friday Report. Yes. Um, so you can visit the website, www.theblackfridayreport.com. It has all the information there that makes it easy. But if you're in the Atlanta area, you can catch Black Friday Report on Fridays at 8 p.m. on Peachtree TV. If you're outside of the Georgia area, um, you can check it out on Atlanta News First Plus app. That's on Roku TV, Apple TV, as well as um, Roku, Apple. That's another one. But you can find it on the website at www.theblackfridayreport.com. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a good show. Um, again, it's, you know, we have an activity. We go and visit local Black-owned businesses. Um, we give our actual feedback back to these Black-owned businesses. And I'm hoping that it instills in people that when you visit a Black-owned business, you don't have to, if you have a bad experience, it doesn't have to be, oh, this is why I don't support Black-owned mm -hmm. businesses or I'm not going to other Black-owned businesses. Give them feedback. Give them the feedback. Have grace. Um, and then at the end of the episode, we actually sit down with the owner so we can give you more insight into the challenges um, that these black owned business owners are facing so that we can have that understanding and have more grace and also find more ways that we can connect and pour back into our community. The dollar only stays six, six hours in the black community. And we got to change mm -hmm. that. That's crazy. We're one of the top consumers in America. And it's crazy that our dollar doesn't stay in our community for longer than six hours. So. We're working to change that. We're not just going to talk about it. We're going to be about it and do it. So yeah, check out Black Friday Report. It's a fun show, but you're also going to get some information and education as well. And I just want to say, man, I really appreciate you for just being intentional in all your work. I appreciate you for coming on and sharing your light. 
and just making sure that the project that you're involved in is definitely something that is of upliftment and not just have to be entertainment. It's like really pushing the the, the culture forward. A lot of people talk about pushing the needle and like what you're doing is pushing the needle forward. And I definitely uh, want to promote this episode on, on the ancestral plan and, and, and promote uh, the episodes that you guys have coming out with Black Friday Report because it's definitely something that's beautiful. And um, I got to get on that wave. I have I got to get on the, the my black uh, black business on Friday. I probably have <laughs> to do with clothes. I have to start with clothes, just buying clothes here and there. But um, just find a local black businesses in the area. But I definitely appreciate you, you know, doing that with the Black Friday initiative. I, I really appreciate yeah. that. And yeah, I, and I there's also say, household items. Oh, sorry. Yes. This, there, really no, quick, no, there's no. also household items. They have deter- their detergents that are black owned, toothbrushes that are black owned. I actually have a. Um, I'll send it over to you after this call too. I have a mm. list of household items. Really quick. Um, I was looking to buy a house. It ended up not working out because of COVID. They were trying to raise my price, and I and I didn't get my house. Um, I used that money to pour it back into Black Friday report, but. With that, what I did is I created a list of Black-owned house items. So I was like, mm. okay, you know what? I didn't get the house, but how can I use this to, to benefit others? Um, so I had already had a running list that I was making for myself of all the things I wanted Black-owned in my home. So I have a running list of Black-owned house items that I'll send over to you. Toothbrushes, detergent, um, dish detergent, literally all the things in your house that are Black-owned. So it doesn't have to be just clothes. I'll make sure to send it over to you. If you could do that soon, you know, send off over a list. And if you have their social media, that would really help. We could do a collab post on the ancestral plan and on your platform and we could just promote it like that. That'd be super dope. Because I anytime I put back promote black owned businesses, everybody loves it. So um that would really be helpful. So um yeah, I, I'm all for that. But I just want to say I appreciate you coming on. Like this has been a great conversation, powerful conversation. And um I know the people are going to love it. So thank you for gracing us with your presence. This has been one-on-one with Ahmad the Poet with Symphony Thompson, and I will see you in the next one. Peace, you guys.